Music is elemental. Music is essential. Music is basic for the living of these days. And so to start us off here this morning for the message, I do want to share two stories from Africa. And these two stories from Africa are on this theme of music being elemental. And the first story is from a Wayne Muller book. And his book is titled, How Then Shall We Live? And if you're in a reflective time in your life, uh, this would be a great book. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. Wayne Muller, How Then Shall We Live? And this is a story that's in the book. There's a tribe in Africa where the birth date of a child is counted not from when they're born and not from when they're conceived, but the birth date of a child is counted from the day that the child was thought of in its mother's mind. When a mother decides that she will have a child, what she does is she goes off and she sits under a tree by herself and she listens. And she listens until she can hear the song of the child that wants to come. And after she's heard the song of this child, the mother-to-be comes back to the man who will be the child's father. And she teaches the song to him. And then when the mother is, is pregnant, what the mother does is she teaches that child's song to the midwives and to the other women of the village. And so when that child is born, the older women and the people around her, they sing the child's song to welcome it. Praise God. And then as the child grows up, the other villagers are taught that child's song. So if the child falls, if the child hurts their knee, someone picks the child up and they sing that song to the child. Or perhaps the child does something wonderful. Then as a way of honoring the person, the people of the village sing his or her song. And it goes this way all the way throughout their life. In marriage, the songs are sung together. And finally, when this person is lying in bed ready to die, all the villagers know his or her song. And they sing for the last time the song to that person. Now tomorrow night I'm going to be facilitating a session at the Seminars for Life. That's at 7 p.m. tomorrow here at the church. And these seminars have been great. They've been meeting Mondays during September. And the session that I'm going to be leading is called Planning Your Own Funeral. Praise God. (laughs) And participants in the workshop tomorrow night, they'll list the songs, the hymns, the melodies that have meaning so that they can be sung during your funeral service. So let's think about that. What is the song of our lives? What are the hymns of our lives? There's another story from Africa I want to share this morning. It's from Seth Gooden's book. It's titled Tribes. The international aid organization UNICEF They spent a ton of money creating posters to promote the idea of child vaccination in the country of Rwanda. And the posters, they were just gorgeous. There were photographs with women and children and there were simple messages written in the local language on these posters. And the messages were about the importance of vaccinating every child. And the posters were perfect except that the female illiteracy rate in Rwanda is about 70%. So words written perfectly didn't make a bit of difference. And then someone noticed that the way that messages are spread in Rwanda is through song. One group of of women would, would sing a song for other women, both as a way of spreading ideas as well as a gift. No song, no message. So a new form of communication, something more elemental was pursued. That message about child vaccinations, that message needed to be shared via song. And I'm going to end today with a story about how music is so elemental that it gets us through the most difficult 
the most difficult spots of life. There's a lawyer and a businessman. His name was Horatio Spafford. And he wrote that famous hymn, It is well with my soul. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Now, Horatio Spafford, he wrote this song in 1873 after much tragedy. He lost his only son in 1871. And shortly after that, Horatio Spafford, he lost all of his real estate holdings in 1871 in the horrible Chicago fire. Now, Mr. Spafford, he kept going. He was a part-time evangelist and he planned to travel to England with his family to reach people for Christ. Now, due to some business commitments, Spafford, he sent his wife and four daughters ahead of him, and he planned to travel to England a, a little bit later. But on November 22, 1873, the ship that his family was on, it collided with another ship. Now, Mrs. Spafford, she was rescued but their four daughters were lost. And when Horatio Spafford, when he was on a ship to go and join his grieving wife, it is believed that it was then when he wrote, It is well with my soul. And Spafford's story is a good reminder to us that singing out to God when things are going our way is not the true test of faith. Singing God's praises in the most difficult of circumstances reveals where we are truly centered. So maybe there's someone here in the sanctuary this morning who is lost at sea. Maybe there's someone here who's going through a dark and confusing time. Now it could be the opposite. Maybe there are people here today who are in good space in life but maybe forgot to praise God for it. It doesn't matter our circumstances. It doesn't matter our situations. It doesn't matter what's going on, what has been or what is to come. We are to say, it is well. We are to say, it is well. When we give our lives over to God, it is well with us spiritually, always. No matter what is going on. It does not matter our lot. Whatever our lot, God has taught us to say what? It is well. It is well with our souls. And so let us pray. We thank you and praise you, God, that you have so graciously given us this gift of music. This gift that we can lift up to you no matter where we are at in life. We want to be a people, God, who sing to you, It is well no matter what is going on in our lives. Let it be so, we pray. Amen. Like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows Whatever my lot, thou hast told.